So I was requested by one of my viewers to make a dubstep tutorial. I haven't really considered of doing anything actually useful within my content, just more humor, just like fun, funny stuff in general. But here I am. So I made a track for this tutorial, which I'm planning to release sometime in the future. So please do not steal it. I'll give you guys a quick listen. <laughs> When it comes to the basic foundations of any track, you gotta have drums. Of course there is room for variation, but in this case I just wanted to keep the, the drums relatively simple and generic for the sake of the tutorial, and just because I didn't really feel like doing anything creative. So. So the first bass I'll be starting with is a bass preset I just decided to name Skrillex with Prox. For the main reason that it sounds pretty close to, the, um, to Skrillex's lead in a lot of his older songs. The basic makeup of the sound is basically uh, a you have a sine wave pitched down by two um, two octaves or 24 semitones. You got two saw waves, one pitched up, 36 semitones or uh, three octaves, and another one pitched 24 semitones or two octaves. And all I really did was just distort them. I turned the distortion off. Plus processing, all I did was add a sound goodizer and just uh, a reverb, pretty reverb. In terms of sound design, one of the main plugins that you should probably utilize is just distortion plugins in general, since it helps give the sound its character and it, it can add, add different types of textures into sounds. So I have just a normal sine wave or sub. And if I add distortion to it, and add an equalizer. So as you can see, you only see one notch in this. And then when I add distortion, I crank it up. So I'm seeing a lot more notches in with the equalizer. What this what distortion is really doing is just adding different frequencies and harmonics to your sound. You can do really interesting stuff with it. For, like if I add white noise and take distortion off, it just has like this. Really not much going on. Once I add distortion. It's a really harsh and dirty sound. The second bass that I made was this thing called, what, which I call the yoink bass. Sounds like that. This sound is a bit more on the complicated side. So the main premise of that sound was uh, frequency modulating or FMing. I'm really not, I really do not know much about FMing. I just kind of stumbled uh, across that sound by accident and it's kind of become something that I'm just trying to slowly figure out how to like fully explain. But when I do find time and fully start to fully understand like how like FMing works in general and like how to explain it for a beginner to understand, I would definitely make a video on that. This is a really short growl I made. So, when it comes to growls, even the most basic shapes could actually become a growl. 
I'm just gonna use uh, saw, a saw wave. Growls are mainly just playing around with filters and making them kind of move. The way growls work is it always has a point A and a point B. It's just what happens between those points that actually makes the sound a growl. So I have a, a bandpass filter over here. So I'm already starting to give like um, the vowel type feeling. Something incredibly important in sound designing is compression. So I have a multi band compressor. You can use plugins like OTT if you wanted to. But it's really up to personal preference. Usually after that, I like to put a bit of distortion. Maybe another filter. In this stage, it's usually up to what sounds good. And so a lot of it's really just experimenting see, to see which what works and what doesn't. So I'm going to change the waveform to something like this. That sounds a bit interesting. Ooh, that sounds cool. Like, like that. You see, if you just like play around settings, you get set, um, you can get results that sound like this. Something that I really like to do on my growls is add a vocode X. It makes it sound like it makes it sound like really plasticky. Really depends on how you use it. Something that you might also want to consider when you make rouse is adding some type of like pitch bend to it. So it has some movement. Something like that could work. And if you want, you can add a bit of reverb. Give some space. At this point, it's mainly just, per as I said, it's personal preference. See what sounds good. Hopefully, get some good results and just ha kind of have fun with it. There aren't really as many rules as you think they are to making growls. As you can see, a common trend in what I do in dubstep is just I have no idea what I'm doing half the time. I know how certain plug, like I know how plugins work, but just. I kind of see what happens if I do this, or what happens when I do that. I have this other bass that sounds kind of like this. So I remember, if I remove all the effects... All this really is, it's just filter automation. So I have something that sounds like that. A filter that goes that opens up and closes really fast with with the resonance. And all I'm and the main thing is just adding a lot of um, bit crusher like down sample. That's how you get that sound. You need to add other effects like more compression, some delay. I'll do a quick example of how I did it over here. So, 
We're gonna take that, all of these, and bring down 24 semitones. Yeah, that's a square wave. It's also a square wave. Do something like this. Add a bit of down sample. You can start to hear a bit. And you start to hear that yo type frequency in there. That kind of wraps up that sound. I have this really quick pluck on it. If you ignore this part, all really is just a really fast um, short decay on two sine waves. And just pitch it up and down really quick. Technically, I don't even need this. Add a filter to make it even shorter, distortion, and cut out low end. And that sums up that sound. Over here, I just have chords, not really much. This is a symbol chord stack, pretty generic. And at, towards the end over here, I have I just automated the volume, so it follows an, a kind of offbeat pattern. Kind of like that. Something that you might want to consider is adding like small reverb sweeps here and there. So I'm gonna play the drop this first portion of the drop without the reverb. And with the reverb. That small reverb sweep right there fills in a lot of space and just makes it feel less empty. Probably should have done a bit more. I'll fix that once I finish recording this video. But just small tad bits here and there really helps uh, make the song feel more full. In the back of the drop, I have just these chants. Yep, just I just cut out the lows, add some reverb. I actually pitched it up a little bit. And the second part, um, I pitched it down. I added some pre-drop vocal. I just added a bit of some OTT, sound geyser. Cut out lows, reverb, not too much stuff going on here. Uh, some... Exhaust or downlifters, I don't know what you guys call them, but I call them exhaust. So that's just there. Sounds like this. Also one reversing up. Some sweep over here. Sub drops, since I really love using sub drops in my songs. Uh, riser. I just cut a bit to um, to make room for the chords up here. And that basically kind of wraps up this demo track. I really hope this video helped you guys a lot. And also, I'm working on an EP. Stay tuned for that. Maybe not. Probably releasing, probably releasing in October or so. And just looking forward to like doing more helpful content like this. See you, kids.